Hello, this is David Coyle again, and thank you for joining me for Real Life Worth Living as we conclude James chapter 5. I want to pick up in verse 17 this time in James 5, where we are faced with another example. This time, not the example of patience so much. Certainly an example of faithfulness and of faith, because... Uh, uh, the writer of Hebrews picks that theme up in Hebrews chapter 11, uh, but he is for us here a prime example of effectual prayer. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. Righteous man, the man or woman or child who has put his trust in Jesus Christ, who's been forgiven of his sin, who knows Jesus Christ as Savior, who follows him because Jesus Christ is his Lord, who uh, looks to him because he is not only the author of life, but he is also the one who plots the course of life for us to live in order to bring glory and honor to his name. The example is that of, it says here, Elias, that is Elijah. Elias is a... Uh, uh, a rendering in Greek of the Hebrew name Elijah. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death, and shall hide a multitude of sin. There is a lot of reward that is available through the idea of intercessory prayer or through the idea of prayer, uh, and especially intercessory prayer. Now, Elijah was here praying for it not to rain, and then again for it to rain. may not realize it, but he was praying an intercessory prayer on behalf of his kinsmen, of uh, his nation. And... Uh, the example, then, of his faith is the example that faith begets answered prayer. Now, I can't tell you that you can go out and pray for it not to rain for three and a half years, and God is going to honor that and make it not rain for three and a half years. But God told him to pray for that. God led him to pray for that because... God wanted to demonstrate to a pagan people that he is indeed God, that there is no God beside him, that the, uh, the gods that were being worshipped by others were false gods. They were, uh, they were statues. They were idols. There was no power. But there is a God, a living God, a God who is interested in every aspect of the life of his people who will answer prayer and who will give sustenance to those who are in need, who recognize him, who see him for who and what he is, the very God of heaven and earth who created all things, including mankind. And yes, he does demand our reverence and our worship and our praise, but he is due it. He deserves it because he created us in order to have fellowship with him. He didn't break the fellowship. We did that on our own. He is seeking to establish it. And with whom he may establish it, he will have it. And with whom he will have it, they will be in his company forever. The others who have rejected him will be rejected by him. And so, in order to demonstrate his power and his grace and his mercy, God had Elijah to pray and to pray for it not to rain for three and a half years, and it didn't. 
And then again at the end of three and a half years for it to rain, and it rained, and the crops came forth, and the weeds grew once more, and the fruit trees blossomed and produced, and all was well, and the brooks flowed again with fresh, clean, sweet water. God's provision was again established. And God's power was evident for all to see. The people who were Elijah's people had erred from the truth. Elijah's prayer and Elijah's obedience uh, gave then a reference for God's people to confess their sin, to receive his forgiveness, to, forgi uh, to receive his righteousness, and be in good stead with him once again. 1 John 1, 9. If any man, if any confess his sin, if any, well, <laughs> you ever flub up? Turn with me over to 1 John. I want to read it for you. I'm not sure I can quote it at this moment. doesn't matter how many years I've been quoting it. For some reason, my tongue got tangled. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. We're all sinners. We all have sinned. We all have the potential to sin. We can all step out of the way, and yet still, in the confession of that sin, in bringing it before God and confessing it to Him and receiving His forgiveness for it, we can be put right back on the path where we got off and progress forward and live the life that He intends for us to live receive the blessings that he receive, uh, intends for us to receive and fulfill then the, um, the very purpose that he has for us all along and, and never miss a beat, never miss a stroke because he is God. Now, therefore, because of all that, look down here at verse 19. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, if you step off the course, if you step aside from the path that God has put you on, if you mess up in your Christian life and somebody comes and prays with you, prays for you, speaks the word of God to you, counsels you, admonishes you, warns you, just as Elijah did his own people and put them back on the course. That person will put you back on the course, uh, will turn you back to the truth, and uh, he says in verse 20, And let him know that he that converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall have saved a soul from death. Now what is this telling us? That anyone who is involved in error, sin, may have his life shortened because the end of sin is death. And there are some areas of sin that will cause an immediate cessation end to your life. And anyone who brings you back onto the course or or you, if you bring anyone back onto the course who has stepped aside, you have saved that person from an untimely death, possibly an awful death, and shall hide a multitude of sins. That is, a multitude of sins will not be performed because you have helped bring that person back to the course that God wanted him to be on. What a great, wonderful, gracious, merciful God we serve. And the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, we thank you for your word. I wish that we had had the time to really in-depth study each and every word in this book. But people, being what they are, just wouldn't stay with us that long. But I pray, Father, that everyone who needs these words, who needs the reminder, 
and who needs the encouragement will have heard these words and will have heeded your call and will follow your will and perform what each and every one needs to in the course of their life for Jesus' sake. Amen.